Hey everybody, this video is an introduction to a method of composing developed by the German composer Arnold Schoenberg in the early 1920s known as 12-tone composition, also known as dodecaphonic music, dodeca meaning 12, phonic meaning sounds, 12 sounds, and also known as serialism because we're putting 12 notes in a series. So these terms are used to talk about this music um, somewhat interchangeably, although they do have some specific meanings to them. Schoenberg was a tonal composer working in and around Vienna, Austria in the early 20th century and had several composition students, most notably Alban Berg and Anton Webern. These three composers, Schoenberg, Berg, and Webern, become known later as the Second Viennese School. Not school in the sense of a place where one would physically go to to learn a craft, but we use the term school to talk about a group of people who are doing the same kinds of things. The first Viennese school would refer to Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven, who were also working in and around Vienna. In 1908, Schoenberg starts to write music that has no discernible tonal center. He's basing his music at this time on the 12 notes of the chromatic scale rather than the diatonic 7-note scale. When we base music on a diatonic 7-note scale with one of the notes being tonic, any note that's not from those 7 notes becomes a dissonant note which must be resolved to a consonance, for example, a suspension, retardation, passing tone, and so forth. But for Schoenberg, he wanted to have all 12 of the notes equal in power and importance where that no one of the notes rises to the level of what we would call a tonic. For him, each of the notes would be tonic. And to borrow an idea from The Incredibles, when everyone is super, no one will be. And this is essentially Schoenberg's idea for the tonal system that in the, if we use the chromatic scale as the basis of our composition, the no one note will rise to the level of tonic. All the notes will be tonic. For him, this was the idea of pan tonality, which other composers and critics would call atonality, having no tonic. This is an excerpt of perhaps Schoenberg's earliest piece without a discernible tonal center written in 1908. Another result of using the 12 notes as equally important for Schoenberg was that dissonance no longer held some subservient position to consonance, but that dissonance becomes the norm. Any notes can be shared together in a harmony or in a melody, and there is no need to resolve them to some sort of consonance. Schoenberg refers to this as the emancipation of the dissonance. But even still, in his music com compositions from 1908 to 1923, Schoenberg found himself fighting his own tendencies to write one note into a phrase that becomes hierarchically more important than the other 11, whether it's a matter of repetition, elongation, metric accent, octave doubling, whatever it is, he found himself struggling to not have any note rise above the other notes. So finally he comes up with a method of composition so that he will um, force himself to not let any note rise above the other notes and he calls it the method of composing with 12 tones. So this is what we call 12 tone music and the idea is that he would lay out a, a tone row of 12 notes and he would use those in the, that sequential order before repeating the series again. And in that way, no one note will become more frequent than any of the other notes. And these notes might be used vertically, horizontally, but we're going to have these 12-tone rows that are repeated throughout this music 
to ensure independence um, of each tone being equally important. Schoenberg in 1923 would call his pupils together and he would say to them, I have discovered a method of composing that will ensure the supremacy of German music for the next 100 years. Well, I'm not sure if Schoenberg's new method of composing had quite the lasting effect that he had prophesied, but it absolutely made an indelible mark in the history of music and composing. Many of the greatest composers since Schoenberg have at least a few compositions that employ these serial techniques, and many devoted their entire career to this method. One such composer was the Italian Luigi Dalla Piccola. And to get a taste of what 12-tone music looks and sounds like, let's take a listen to one of Dalla Piccola's piano pieces. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that introduction to 12-tone composition and the beautiful piano piece I selected for you that was written by the Italian composer Luigi Dalla Piccola in the early 1950s using the dodecaphonic method. In part two, we'll dive in a little deeper and use this Dalla Piccola piece to learn how to find the initial 12-tone row statement in the music and then we'll learn how rows are manipulated by serial composers to create new rows for melodic and harmonic presentation. So I hope to see you in video two.